Arizona has also played a ridiculously difficult schedule playing against Purdue and Florida Atlantic, Alabama, you name it. They've really challenged themselves. Wins over Duke, Michigan State. You and I were here for the uh, blowout against Wisconsin. USC comes in 8-9 after a 4 and 1 start. The Trojans are 4 and 8 since. Ella Larson leaning in. And count the basket plus a foul. And it's on Sellers. A three-point chance for Larson. Well, Larson had an outside little curl. And he did a great job of slowing down when he comes off this little ball screen. He knew he had his defender behind him, gave a little shot fake, and still kept his concentration to make the shot and get fouled. You made the point as we were just sitting here watching Larson warm up to rave about his prospects at the next level. He's one of the top shooters in college basketball, though he missed the free throw there. Yeah, Pella Larson's going to play in the NBA. Yeah, he reminds me a little bit of Christian Brown. He played at Kansas on the national championship team now with the Denver Nuggets. He's not quite as athletic and maybe as offensively aggressive as Brown was, but he is a complete basketball player. Johnson missed a three. Rebound for Iwachukwu. Here's Rodman, T.J. Rodman, who was a transfer from Washington State, has had some success in this arena, but not with USC. Washington State just beat Arizona up in Pullman over the weekend. They're 14-0 under Tommy Lloyd after a loss and an average win by 22 points. Sellers just picked up a second foul already. He's going to have to come out. And that was just because of the transition ability of Arizona. They grab a rebound and immediately pass it ahead. I mean, they're looking to put a lot of pressure on you in transition. Aaron Tupay checking in. Caleb Long is the three. Long rebound tracked down by Johnson. Now Boswell will fire. We talked about the home road splits. He was over 5 in the loss to Washington State. But at home, he shoots a very good percentage. He shoots over 40%, 42% from three on the year. But it is uncanny after an offensive rebound how often that leads to a three. The statistics and analytics say it. After an offensive rebound is the best time in basketball to shoot a three. David Shuku facing up, takes the jumper, comes up short. Johnson up high gets the rebound. Boswell in the open floor. Here's Larson on the cut. Follow at the tip, and it's 7-0 Arizona, the worst start possible on the road for USC. And great give credit there to Umar Balo, not just for getting down the floor, but for shielding a path to the basket for Pella Larson. And then that left the offensive glass wide open. James, who's getting serenaded with booze, it's his first field goal in four games. He had a stretch where he had 25 points over a two-game span. It didn't make a shot the last three, so good start for James here. And got a foul on USC away from the ball. That's three team fouls already on the Trojans. Well, Bronny James went to Sierra Canyon High School in Los Angeles in Chatsworth, and that was just a, a smart play. You know, gave a little shot fake, let the defense fly by, and then was completely under control. He plays compact. He's a solid athlete. He's a good teammate, like a good passer. Jay, the coaching staff has raved about Ronnie James as a person. They say, as you said, a terrific teammate. Not just when he's playing, but how he encourages teammates. No sense of entitlement. Great leader. You see him there talking with his teammates. People forget, too, this is just his 10th game. He had the cardiac arrest this past summer, so he's behind physically, behind in terms of just getting in sync with his teammates as well. And a second with Myron for more. Yeah, just what you said. He hasn't played that much basketball is what Andy Enfield told me. He said if you were judged like most freshmen are judged, people would acknowledge that and how long it takes to get acclimated to this level. Bronny doing that game by game, but he's only played about a month of basketball at this level. Fellas. James missed the first eight games because of that cardiac arrest, and it's taken him some time to, to get his legs under him. He's going to be a good player, but he carries a, a pretty heavy burden with his last name. And a turnover there by USC, or they're going to say actually he was touched last by Arizona. Andy Enfield, year 11. Three straight NCAA tournaments for the Trojans, including an Elite Eight appearance a couple years ago with Evan Mobley. Johnson in the lane and foul. And Jay, they were playing a lot better 
until Isaiah Collier's injury. In fact, Enfield thought they had maybe turned a corner, and then Collier suffered the fractured bone in his right hand, and we won't see him for at least another month. Yeah, he was leading the team in assists. He was also leading him in turnovers, and but he had seemed to turn the corner on the turnover issue where he was making much better decisions. You know, 26 points against Stanford. But with Boogie Ellis out with that hamstring injury, I mean, that's, that's 34 points a game you're trying to make up for without Ellis and Collier being in the lineup. That's a that's a lot to have to to have to supplement without those two being able to play. And now you got Joshua Morgan who is back tonight. We'll see how many minutes he can play. Now Myron already touched on all the lost weight. He's barely been able to hold down food the last week or so and he's your leading rim protector one of the top shot blockers in the country so they've missed that as well the last couple of games usc going with a little zone they look like they're going zone on a make and man on a miss not sure if that pass was intended for boswell but it got to him here's johnson falling away tough shot but it goes and it's 11 for arizona what a, an adjustment on the mishandling of the ball. Keyshot Johnson has been a great addition to this Arizona program. You know, he can switch out on a point guard. He can guard a, a five-man inside. One of the best defenders in the country. And, and early on in the season, they played. I think it was one of their first, second game of the year. They played at Duke. And the reason Arizona won was Keyshot Johnson. He was a man on the floor in that game. Four-year player at San Diego State. Part of the national championship runner-up as Tex a year ago has brought tremendous leadership to this Arizona team along with Caleb Love coming over from North Carolina. Johnson fires. Missed the three. USC one of five from the floor. Jaden Bradley, Alabama transfer on the floor. Here's Love hoisting and hitting. Caleb Love with his first points, and it's a 10-point lead timeout SC. Caleb Love is just in a great rhythm right now. Gory. And Arizona 5 of 7 against that SC defense. 2 of 3 from 3. And so many of these offenses, and you count Arizona among them, these are multiple action plays that you're going against. And communication and vision are two really important factors in your defense. Right now, USC is lacking that. Good job that time by Jaden Bradley, knocking it away from James. Shot clock close to 10. James, terrific athlete. Good pass that time by James. Gets the assist. Kajani Wright with the bucket. Nice catch by Kajani Wright. And I think Kobe Johnson has got to attack the big guy when he comes off pick and roll. Arizona's in drop coverage. Love with his second three already. Got 38 on the year. With North Carolina two years ago, he made 93 in a season. It's just the efficiency that's so impressive. A near 2-1 to one assist turnover ratio this year. That's his highest of the season. Good pass. And the basket for Rodman and a foul call on Arizona's Johnson. Just a little elbow kind of. They get in almost like a horn set, and they go with a double zoom. We just got an initial cut, and then the second cutter, G.J. Rodman, good use of the left hand. But you have to stay below your man there, stay between your man and the basket. If they're coming off that little screen, then you trail them around it, but you just can't allow them to cut behind you and get to the rim that easily. Foul was actually on Larson, so he goes to the bench with two. Ozias Sellers uh, barely played. Started the game for SC, got two. He went to the bench. Another famous last name at the line. DJ Rodman, son of Dennis, completes the three-point play. DJ Rodman spent four years at Washington State. He had some good games in this building. Had three threes in the second half. What is it, Washington State, to beat Arizona in this building? Five minutes gone by, 17-9. Arizona in front. Here's Lewis getting downhill and getting the layup. Freshman out of El Paso, Texas. Explosive. It was too easy, and Krivas cleared out some space in the middle because he kept posting and really took care of that middle defender. Page missed the three. Rodman doing a good job keeping it alive. And another Arizona foul. That's... 14 fouls, and Jay Bradley picks up the person. Jay Bradley just couldn't get the block out. He was facing D.J. Rodman, almost like a face guarding situation. Page to the bench, and Harrison Hornery checks in. Junior from Australia, he actually started against Colorado. 
has a great look at a three, but can't hit it. He didn't score the other night, even though he started the game for USC. USC should have had a bucket there. Kobe Johnson did a great job of setting a screen. They were switching, and Arizona couldn't get underneath, and he just sealed right in front of the basket. That should have been an easy score. So Arizona possession, the Wildcats dropped over 12 in the AP poll this week. The only team in the Pac-12 in the top 25 is Sellers is back replacing James. It's hard to squeeze a team into the top 25. It seems like the Big 12's got everybody. <laughs> they got eight teams ranked in the top 25 this week. Well, being ranked is good this year, especially if you're ranked high. Everybody gets knocked off. Well, especially on the road. You have to hold serve at home. A lot of pressure on you to win home games because of how difficult it is to win on the road. Yeah, Johnson talked about that. Great work ethic. He gets the offensive rebound and Hornery commits the foul. His first and the fifth on USC. Well, you said it. Eight Big 12 teams, most in conference history. UConn number one. Crazy to think they've won national championships yet in season. Haven't been number one since 2009. Well, last year was a good example. They were the best team early on, then lost six of eight once they got to January. And not only righted the ship, but became the best team in the country again down the stretch. They didn't lose a non-conference game last year. Same thing happened in 2011, you know, with Kemba Walker. You know, the, the only games they lost that year were Big East games. Had a great run in the Big East tournament, which uh, was a springboard to the NCAA tournament with Walker. Led UConn to the championship. Yeah, you nicknamed him Cardiac Kemba that year. That was fun. That day game. Was they beat Pittsburgh that day? What a great game. That hit Kobe Johnson last out of bounds. <laughs> the Arizona ball. And that's the that was not a live ball turnover, so they can play five on five. But that's sort of an example of you know just ball handling issues where. USC is giving the ball up and you know you turn the ball over it sounds simple, but you don't get a shot You don't give yourself a chance to get fouled and you're giving yourself a chance for an offensive rebound Those are three pretty good things the defense at time Rodman it's a Bad angle to make a post feed. Oh, Revis slots that shot into the third row Seven foot two inch freshman from Lithuania he is going to be, Dave, a great player. Leads the Pac-12 in Pac-12 games and field goal percentage is 65% in Pac-12 games. He's averaging double figures and about six rebounds a game, but he's got great hands. He's very skilled. You give him a little bit of time, he's going to be one of the next great big men here at Arizona. It's Colorado here in a game that Arizona won by 47. He had 15 points, 7 of 8 shooting. Last two opponents here at home, Arizona's won by a combined 66 points against maybe the second and third best team in the league, Colorado and Utah. But Johnny Wright trying to keep it alive. Krivas gets the rebound. Love looking to push pace. There's an example of those great hands by Krivas. Three ball comes up short for Love. Horner, he gets the board. When playing in this zone, blockout responsibilities can be so much more difficult, especially on a long rebound. You got to find a body and put your body on. They strip Johnson again, second time it's gone off his leg, but this is a live ball turnover and a blocking foul here called on USC on the drive by Jaden Bradley. It's on Rodman, his first. What do you think? Well, I don't know what to think anymore. I mean, that's more of a primary defender. He didn't take it head on. But generally, I like the idea that if it's not a hundred percent, it's a block. You know, make a play at the rim, make a strip. But if you're gonna if you're gonna take a charge, you got to be there, and and the referees have to see it one hundred percent, not not fifty fifty like it was for years. And it didn't look like he was there. I don't think he was based on that replay. Borovicin and checking in, so getting early minutes here. Philip Borovicin and off the bench instead of Morauskas. Here's Boswell on the paint. Falling away, blocked by Johnson, who's one of the Pac-12 leaders in steals. He gets the rejection there. You always have to know where Kobe Johnson is on the floor. He's got complete freedom on the defensive end. He plays like, almost like a rover. He roams around, and he's just got an excellent sense and 
terrific hands. Obviously blocks that shot, but he gets it. You know, last year at 72 steals, that was top 20 in the country. Ronnie James back on the floor for USC. Shot clock at three. Ball out from the foul line. Good hustle for Beach and in to keep it alive. And USC just can't get beat to the ball like that. But Johnny Wright had an inside track to that ball and Borah Beach and beat him to it. Lewis penetrates, hands, can't finish. Rebounded by Vinci Wachukwu. Sellers in transition. Arizona pushing USC further out on the floor. They're switching those ball screens and exchanges. Ornery for three. Got it. A much needed hit for USC. The first three point basket for the Trojans. Well, that's his game. Ornery's a stretch big who's skilled. And he plays really hard. But now 14 of his 19 field goals on the season are threes. You got to chase him off that line, force him to put it down. Here's Borbichin. Can't answer. Balo with the offensive rebound and saves it before stepping out. And he beat three gold shirts to that ball. Yeah, that can't happen on the road or at home. Hornery commits a foul. 17 foul already. So Arizona is going to shoot free throws. The rest of the half, second on Hornery. When we come back, 94 feet. Jay doubles up, too, for the price of one. What an honor. They, they needed leadership in that locker room. He's brought that. The guys played in a lot of big NCAA tournament games. The holdover Arizona players had played in big games, just not in the big dance. They had lost early the last two years, including in the first round last year after winning the Pac-12 tournament. But you bring in Caleb Love and Keyshaw Johnson, who have won big games in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and even as good as they were last year, I think Arizona was one of the best teams in the country last year. They're number one seed. Uh, I think they're better this year. They're better defensively, and Keyshaw Johnson is a big reason why. And having Caleb Love come in here and providing that firepower and having it that firepower be completely under what a steal. Lewis blocked, but a foul, and Lewis will go back to the line. Arizona. Didn't he read that like a defensive back? I mean, that was beautifully done by KJ Lewis, just playing almost a rover as Arizona was putting on some full court pressure and immediately goes right to the rim into the body of Kajani Wright. When you look at physical talent alone, KJ Lewis might have the most. Just incredible athlete. And obviously, he's not going to get the minutes that he will get next year if he comes back. Has to work on his shot a little bit. He struggled from deep, averaging about six points per game, shooting just over 20 from three. But they're really high on the prospects for K.J. Lewis. Well, he's a talented freshman and an aggressive driver. And you mentioned how you know, how athletic he is. And he's a good defender. I mean, you just saw him take the ball away. And I've got a foul here in Borg Vichinen guarding corner. He's trying to stay with him. It's his first and the fifth team foul in Arizona. 18 fouls on SC. And with the depth that Arizona has, you know, you got a number of players that aren't getting the kind of minutes that perhaps they would like. But man, Arizona's practices are competitive. And I, I'm amazed. I've been here two days, and I've probably been in this gym for 12 hours in the last two days. It's amazing how much extra work a lot of these players get in. Both Caleb Love and Kylan Boswell got in multiple shooting workouts while I was here that I was watching. I don't know where these guys get this energy. James drills it. So Bronny James knocking down his second shot in two tries. By the way, Joshua Morgan is in the game for the first time, missing the last couple games due to illness. A turnover by Arizona. Well, it's amazing, Joshua Morgan. It is, there's Bronny James knocking down the shot. You know, he's a good shooter, good mid-range game. He's just a young player that... He's a he's a very good high school player. You know, wound up making the McDonald's All-America team. I think the NBA talk, beautiful cut, just poor communication defensively. You know, they thought he was going to go set that double zoom. Instead, he cut off the, the high post and got an easy bucket. No pressure on the ball. And USC back in that 2-3 zone, which Washington State did a good job with against Arizona. And Arizona's got to get more movement. Jay, going back to Bronny James, if, if he just has time to develop, it would be interesting to see what's there. But, you know, just watching him this year, 
And he easily gets sped up. We saw that the other night. Made some turnovers. Maybe took some bad shots. But he just needs time to play. And this is only game 10. Yeah, and he's, he needs time to learn and develop. You know, he's not ready yet. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? But sort of the the hype that has surrounded him because of his last name, I think it's put some unrealistic expectations on him. It's not his fault. He does have 6.3 million Instagram followers. That's pretty good. <laughs> You're close. That's like 100,000 more than you. <laughs> Follow hits the free throw. By the way, Arizona's missed its last eight shots and still leads by seven. Lamar Ballo, senior from Mali, who started out collegiately at Gonzaga. He had eight offensive rebounds in Arizona's last game, which was a loss in Pullman. Goes one for two, Ballo does at the line, but the USC lane violation, so Ballo will get another crack at it. Horner lost his balance and just put his fingers into the lane to try to keep upright. And one of the things Arizona needs to do in this game is adjust to the changing defenses. You know, they're getting really good movement against man, but the zone has caused them to stand around a little bit. They need to send cutters through. They could even run their man stuff against it. Ballo missed it again. Rebound Rodman. And honestly, that's why a lot of teams play zone. So they can get you to stand around. Ronnie James, the leading score right now for USC with six points right at his season average. Here's a three from Johnson. It's no good. Rodman gets the offensive rebound. James has the hot hand, gives it up. Rodman's three, short. USC one for seven. James, another rebound. And this time it goes down. Three-pointer by Rodman to get USC within four. Excellent pass after that long offensive rebound. Going off a make that lets USC get back in that zone. And it, it's not that it's confounded Arizona, it's just slowed him down. Made him take more time. There's not, not enough cutting yet, not enough movement. It's just been windshield wipered around the top. Here's Boswell. No good on the three. Tommy Lloyd told us today he was a little concerned. The home road talk that maybe his guys would just assume that it would come easy tonight here at home as James misses and Ballo gets the rebound. Against the zone, they're going against man now after the miss. But against the zone, they can still screen the zone. Ball screen it. They'll get two playing one and then play out of it. Larson, he'll pop. Too strong in the three. The Pac-12 leader in three-point shooting. Rebound Kobe Johnson. Arizona gets back. Johnson takes the shot anyway. In and out. And Larson with the rebound. Took advantage of the right suddenly on the screen as he was going to the basket. Freed him up. Arizona started seven of nine from the floor. The Wildcats have missed ten in a row from the field. They don't have a field goal in the last seven minutes. Johnson ends that a three from Keyshawn Johnson. Beautiful penetration down the lane by Caleb Love and found Keyshawn Johnson in the right corner. Laid back to seven with eight minutes to go in the first half. Good back cut. And Johnson with the layup. Morgan found him. Arizona is not staying in between USC and the basket. And the first thing you have to do is take away that back cut. Good. Johnson fouled by Rodman. Two on him. Free throws for Arizona when we come back. Arizona's got a new football coach. Brent Brennan joins Byron Metcalf. Live from McHale next. Played at UCLA. And as you mentioned, Myron spent time at Arizona under the great Dick Tomey, also worked for Coach Tomey at San Jose State. And is back in Tucson with big shoes to fill. Arizona was one of the top second-half teams in college football this year. Ten wins and off to the Big 12 now. And look how many dominoes fell from the retirement of Nick Saban at Alabama. You know, Kalen DeBoer leaving Washington. And that opened up something at Arizona. I saw something where the decision by Nick Saban to retire, a hundred million dollars changed hands for buyouts and coaches' salary increases. Remarkable. And he's throwing Belichick and Carroll uh, in the NFL. I'd love to know what the number is for, <laughs> for that. Shot clock down to seven. He would shoot for one the face off. Boy, he's talented, but like Ronnie James had. 
a heart issue, suffered cardiac arrest two summers ago, and then had back surgery after he came back, worked himself back into shape, got a back injury at the end of last year. It's almost amazing that Iwachuku only averages five, six points a game. You know, he uses either hand around the basket. And Caleb Love is off to another great start. He's in such a good rhythm. He's three of five from three, and now a turnover. Iwachuku couldn't handle the pass. Rivas knocked it away, and that's when you got to hold off your defender. Just post stronger. Johnson, jump up, no. And SC ball. Aronson Page wide open. Got to knock it down, he does. He's now 5 of 12 on the year from three. 6'11 freshman from Atlanta. High school teammate at Wheeler High School of Isaiah Collier, who's out with that broken hand. And Page shoots almost 40% from three. Iwachuku gets the steal. USC only now five. Just outside six minutes to go, despite being down two starters. Johnson misses. And then Keyshaw Johnson, the rebound for Arizona. I think USC has an assist on every bucket they've made. In and out of the three from Love. Ten baskets for SC, nine assists. Six assists for Arizona on nine baskets. Just 39% shooting for the Wildcats. And Arizona's been beating on some cuts in the half court. But one thing they have to do is get a little bit more pressure on the ball on some of these passes try to take away vision. Sellers off the mark. That's his first shot attempt of the game after putting up 18 points, 16 in the first half against Colorado Saturday night. Johnson tried to drive on Page. The lane was cut off. Yeah, good job by Page to angle Johnson out. Instead of giving him a straight line drive, he angled him more toward the corner and short corner. Floater Boswell, no good. Krivas got the rebound blocked. That's the second block for Kobe Johnson. Just a great defensive play, but Krivas went after that with both hands. What a pass. And Rodman put a great position. USC within three. That was like a quarterback throwing it into a tight window. He threw that where only Rodman could catch it. Now back to the zone. Five minutes remaining. Nice pass underneath by Love. Johnson trying to create some room. And they call Iwachuku for the defensive foul. Second personal. USC already with 10 team fouls. That's just an excellent pass over the top of Caleb Love. And DJ Rodman did a great job of holding Love off. And... It was lofted such that only Rodman could catch it. Threw it right over the top, and Rodman just kept that physical contact with Love and wouldn't let it get around. Now 10 assists on 11 baskets for USC. Johnson hits the free throw. Tomorrow night, number 10, Memphis. 10 straight wins. Best start for Memphis since 2008, taking on USF at FedEx Forum 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Memphis is an interesting team. First, David Jones has been spectacular. Transferred in from DePaul, the lefty, one of the best wings in the country. But they've won a bunch of games. They've gotten into the top 10 in the polls. But the analytics don't seem to like them as well. And you look back over the, the past, teams like Memphis you know, have not advanced very far in the tournament. Meanwhile here, Arizona's taken 10 more free throws than USC. Here's Page, same spot, different result. Missed it this time. Rebound Larson. That one was contested late by Keyshawn Johnson. That might have been a good opportunity to shot fake and drive it. Love in traffic. Fumbled it. Gets it to Bradley. And the basket counts plus a foul. Three-point opportunity for Jaden Bradley. Jaden Bradley never took his eyes off the rim. He drove right into the body contact, but watch his eyes here. He twists his body in the air, but never took his eyes off the rim, even as he was hitting the deck. Your eyes make layups. And that was a big reason he was able to complete that play. What a great play by the Alabama transfer. From Rochester, New York, spent the one year with the Crimson Tide, was a starter there, but thought he'd have a better chance of getting more playing time and amicable departure. And Tommy Lloyd knew him in high school, recruited him, and when he became available in the transfer portal, it was an easy get. Now they played Alabama earlier this year. Nate Oates spoke very glowingly about Bradley, even though he, he, he left after the one season. There's James for three. Got it. Ronnie James. 
having a terrific first half. Maybe the best half he's had offensively of the season. Nine points, four or five from the floor. Just completely under control coming off that ball screen. And Pella Larson wasn't up to touch. He also has two assists and no turnovers. And USC back within four on the James triple. The Trojans are hanging in there on the road in a difficult place to watch. LeBron James Jr. having a terrific first half. USC hanging around, but they had a great first half against Colorado, much better than this. They were up 13, but then a 23-point second half swing. Can they keep it up while under man? Down two starters with Boogie Ellis and Isaiah Collier out with injury. And limited minutes for Joshua Morgan is back tonight. Missed a couple games due to respiratory illness. Long two on the way, and good for Bradley. Much better attack of the zone. Getting a piece of the paint, shot faking, ball faking, and penetrating, making two play one and then play out of it. And that's really going to be the issue. Another really good cut. Just you see the USC couldn't handle the ball. The third time that's happened to Kobe Johnson where he has not been able to secure the ball and it's been knocked away. Bradley feeling it. Short this time, but Bala with the offensive rebound. Another USC foul. It's going to put Bala with the line. Is they're way over the foul limit right now. Instead of moving the ball just around the horn, the ball went from side to side. You know, Pella Larson had it on the left, shot fake, drive, then pass out of it, and really made that zone defense move. And I think Arizona even needs to send more cutters through. And cut up. On Friday night, we have an NBA doubleheader with the Denver Nuggets in action taking on the Boston Celtics. A lot of people think that that is a preview of the NBA Finals. We'll see. Obviously, Kevin Durant of the Suns is here tonight watching this game. And then the Warriors taking on Dallas in the second game. Uh, the Warriors game tonight against the Jazz was postponed. We want to send our regards to the family of Dayan. Milojevic, the assistant coach for the Warriors, who passed away suddenly. And obviously to all the Warriors, the organization, the coaching staff. It's so sad. It happened right after a team meal, I understand. It's a tragic happening. It was in Utah, and so the NBA postponing that game. Keyshawn Johnson drives. There's a lot of contact. No whistle. USC ball. Down seven. Two and a half to go. The conduct incidental because he lost the ball. But a good short roll catch. Just couldn't keep it. And Johnson, who was 0 for 3 from 3, drills that one. And USC with inch four again. SC is moving the ball. But Lewis answers. They didn't get over to Lewis on defense. And he got a good look and drilled it. Well, Kobe, Kobe Johnson got run over by Umar Fowler. There's no call on it, but he was flat on his back. Two minute mark, 41 34, Arizona. Arizona 6 of 13 from three. James tried to fit that one into a tight hole, and it was picked off by Lewis. Three on two. And Lewis throws it over the head. He thought Bradley was going to the corner. Instead, Bradley was cutting to the rim. One of the better defensive exchanges you've seen from Arizona. Arizona. Arizona's been caught going under a lot of different screens, but KJ Lewis did a great job of just reading that pass and just throws it away on the other end. So Lewis to the bench. We got Love, Boswell, and Bradley on the floor together. Arizona's actually shooting it better from three-point range than they are from inside the arc. 46 percent from three, 35 percent from two, but a seven-point lead with 90 seconds to go. Double Johnson, Page was open. Now here's James for three. Rebound ball up. SC doing a pretty good job getting back in transition. That was just the second miss for James. He does have nine points. Almost a turnover again by Arizona. Keyshawn Johnson tucking the lane and gets the bounce. Johnson has a really nice touch. Had 20 points against Utah. Maybe had his best scoring game against Purdue where he had 24. 
James going to try it again. Comes up short again. And now Boswell in the open floor. James trying to chase down, but Boswell uses the glass and lays it in. A really smart play by Jaden Bradley to throw that ahead. And when he saw that his teammate was going to get it, Kylan Boswell just took off. And the lead up to 11 now for the Wildcats here at home. A 7 0 run. Entry pass. Wright couldn't score, but a foul on Ballo. Omar Ballo just needed to play a little more up the line. Could have discouraged that pass. But the long rebound, and as soon as Bradley got it, Kylan Boswell already gone. And Bronny James, after he took the shot, unable to get back. He was the deep man. USC's only attempted three free throws in this game. The 16 for Arizona. Johnny Wright, 85% so far in the season. This is Epic. He was a McDonald's All-American. What a high-level rebounder he was coming out of high school. Probably the best high school rebounder in his class. And he can really run. Andy Enfield and the staff have done a tremendous job recruiting. Obviously, they got Evan Mobley that Elite Eight year. One of the reasons they were so good that year, they did a good job identifying players from smaller schools to transfer in. Drew Peterson, who's playing at Rice, he's a big part of that team. They've always been able to recruit at SC under Enfield. Got a timeout here by Arizona. 24.4 remaining in the half. Tommy Lloyd taking a timeout to set up the final shot of the half. Looks like they're going to be going against the zone, so Tommy Lloyd having the ability to call a set that they can run against this. They want to take it so they have enough time for an offensive rebound, but USC can't take it the other way. And for Arizona, I think at halftime, they're going to be talking about tightening up their defense. They got beat on cuts far too many times and on screening situations. Bradley into the lane. Puts up the shot, missed it, got it back to one hand tip, no good. And rebounded by SC, and the half comes to an end. Arizona had a couple looks at it there, but couldn't finish. Still a 10 point lead for Arizona at halftime. And let's check in with Myron standing by with Coach Deloitte. Tommy, Coach talked about team space and adversity and fighting through it. USC came back, you had to battle them all half. What do you think of your team's performance? Already had a lot of quality wins. Duke, Michigan State, Wisconsin. Losses against some excellent teams like Purdue and FAU. And they really need a win to stay within striking distance of first place. If they were to lose somehow and fall three games back of Oregon, I know we've got a long way to go, but not a deficit the Wildcats want to fall into as Ballo gives Arizona its largest lead of the game at 12. Arizona against that zone, sent a cutter through right away, overloaded one side, and then got it right into Umar Ballo with his defender right on his back. Arizona 3-2 and two in league play. Oregon the top team at 5-0. Oh. USC at 2-4. And 8-9 and, eight and nine overall. The Trojans, as Jay touched on there, without Collier and Ellis and Joshua Morgan, who's back after missing the last game due to illness, lost 15 pounds from the illness and will not play his normal minutes. Ballo attacking, missed the shot, rebound Kobe Johnson. With Jaden Bradley starting the second half for Arizona. Ball out of bounds, last touch by the Wildcats is checking with Myron. Yeah, Andy Enfield said he liked the way that his team picked up the intensity after they were down early. He said the first couple of minutes of the second half will determine the outcome. They've got to play hard, get some stops, and get back into this game. But he feels like they're close. He also said he liked Bronny James and how aggressive and assertive he was in that first half. And he's looking for more of that going forward. Caleb Love taking it to the cup. Basket and a foul on Rodman. So a three-point chance for Love. That's his first two-point basket. He made three threes in the first half. And that's the kind of thing, Dave, that drives coaches crazy. You're inbounding the ball underneath. Bronny James taking it in against Umar Ballo. Tries to throw it long. It got tipped. And then all of a sudden, Arizona is laying it in on the other end. And that's an area where Caleb Love is so good. He needs to shoot more free throws. 
He's an like an 86 percent free throw shooter, one of the great free throw shooters in the country, and he's so strong and athletic. Yeah, he can knock down threes, but when he decides he's going to put his head down and attack the basket, there aren't a lot of players that are going to stay in front of him in college. One of 25 players on the Wooden Award midseason list. He's got eight 20 point games, seven in his last nine outings, and he's already at 12 points in this one. Arizona by 13, largest lead. Rodman's three, no good. And James comes down with a rebound. Reverse layup is good. So Bonnie James, who had two points in the last three games combined, has 11 so far here. Arizona going in. I think they call it Utah, where Umar Balo, when he's going against a non-shooting big guy, Iwachuku, who just plays in the middle of the lane. Doesn't even go out to guard. So Iwachuku's got to become a screener and free up the ball. Rodman fouled by Johnson. First on Keyshaw Johnson. Ronnie James just out battling Caleb Love for that ball. Just went a little long. He took it to the other side of the rim. To shield off any shot block attempt. I give James credit, right? Fighting through a slump and dealing with all the pressure that you know comes with being LeBron's son and. Even LeBron saying publicly a couple times that he should be starting and could play for the Lakers right now. That obviously is a lot to deal with uh, as an 18-year-old, but he's handled it well. It's been something he's been around his whole life. And again, the coaches just rave about the type of young man that he is and the, the job that uh, uh, Bronny's parents did in raising him. And he's going to be a good player. He's, it's going to take a little bit of time, but he's having a terrific game in this one. USC down 10. They go to Balo on the low block. And it's Larson inside. Balo with the five. Uh, they're not going to send another guy at Umar Balo against that zone. He can not only take it himself, but Pella Larson did a nice job of just cutting down the middle of the lane and presenting himself in front of the rim. Got Bradley defending... Ronnie James again. He started the second half, not Boswell. Here's Kobe Johnson spotting up. Three is down. And that was a tough shot because Pella Larson recovered right to him off that ball screen. Keyshot Johnson switched off right on Bronny James, and that's not going to be a, a shot that Bronny James is going to have an advantage with on that drive. But that was a great catch and shoot by Kobe Johnson. Second three for Johnson. Inside follow foul by Wachukwu. That's three on Vince. That's a tough matchup for Uchuku when he's one-on-one -on -one in the post in the middle of that zone. Balo just got into his body. He was straight up and down. Got the angle on him. The pass was beautifully delivered. That was right to his left hand so he could turn over his left shoulder. Not the worst guy to foul. 38% on the year in conference games and about 44% overall at the line. And he shoots a lot of free throws because he's so deep down in the post. It is a very good free throw shooting Arizona team, but that percentage would be even higher if Umar Balo was knocking down free throws at a higher rate. A couple of substitutions for USC with Josh Morgan checking in along with Page. Rodman and Ibuchuku go to the match shoot. And the free throw shooting for Balo means at certain times during the game, you might not be able to have him in there. His opponents are just going to foul him, send him to the line. Percentage-wise, that's better than just defending straight up. What could that mean in an NCAA tournament game where you need him on the floor for rebounding late? In late games, you, you might not be able to play him because of that. You know, if you've got a lead late, you know, teams are just going to play, play hack-a-shack against him. All batted around after the miss by Ballo. I thought we saw a lane violation. Lane violation shouldn't be taken into account if the ball goes in because there's no advantage game. But if the shot's missed, the non-violating team should get the ball. Follow up high to get the rebound after the miss by Johnson. Now they're going against man-to-man -man after the miss. You have to be aware of what defense they're playing against. Beautiful cut. Follow couldn't get the tip. And Sellers out of there with it. James attacking and double dribble. What? 
Mike Reed must have seen something that I didn't. Let's take a look. Here. Unless he put it down the first time with both hands. I really didn't see that. Neither did Andy Enfield. Watch when he catches it. Yeah, there's there's no double dribble there. No. A little mystified by that one. 40 52 43, Arizona, four minutes in. Pella Larson, nice pass. Boswell checking in. Missed the shot. Good defense by SC. Another offensive rebound, though, for Arizona. They are dominating the glass. Previous trying to take it away. Hustles, but touched it last as it goes to USC. But Bronny James made a basket saving play there. That cut by Boswell was an easy basket. Beautiful cut. And he just knocked it away from him at the end. James with 11 points, four assists, three rebounds. Johnson got Larson off his feet, can't hit the shot, and no offensive rebounds for SC. Larson down court, got it! What a great pass by Long down court. That's a beautiful pass. I think Larson actually got fouled there, but completed the play. And that's Arizona at its best in transition. And that's a guard grabbing a rebound. You can rip and run, but the pass ahead is so much harder to defend. Larson out with eight. He hasn't made a three. He was eight for eight from three in his last three home games. 0 for one tonight. Well, how good was Paul Larson? Great cut by Bernie James. Missed it. The tip won't go either for Morgan. Larson was so good in that game against Wisconsin that we were here for. Love, wide open, buries it. Four three-pointer for Love. Largest lead for Arizona tonight. The speed of Arizona after they get a rebound. They run, and more importantly, this year, honestly, for the Pac-12, but especially for UCLA when you've got such a young team. And it's easy for young teams to get down after you take a couple punches. And that's really the sign of a good team. You're going to get, you know, it's like going through a series of prize fights. You're not going to go through a prize fight and not get punched. And how do you respond when you get punched? You know, Arizona got punched on the road against Washington State. They got beat by Stanford. Stanford, that might have been Stanford's best game when they scored almost 100 points on them. Yep. Arizona with a 14-point lead. It's largest of the night. Corner each driving, lost the ball. Larson got another strip. Arizona toughening up on some of these cuts. A little more alert in the second half and maybe in the first half. Larson penetrates, gets to the hole, missed the layup. And Krebus, who really hustling in the offensive glass, is pulled to the floor by Hornery. That's his fourth foul. Back to Tucson in a moment. Injury. You know, Boogie Ellis had 35 against Arizona Marshall last year. And just a, a three-level scorer that can create shots of breakdown guard. That's a lot of points that's out of the lineup for USC. And you're asking them to come into this place and you know beat a team that I think is top five good in Arizona. Well, the injury happened. 11 days ago against Stanford is uh, Robert gets the basket and a foul the, the injury to uh, Ellis I'm talking about he came back and played the next game and It didn't feel great after so now he's missed two games in a row Collier suffered the injury Against Washington State over the weekend and coaching staff felt that Collier was really starting to get comfortable was playing better defensively not turning over as much He and Ellis were playing better together and if the team in general was turning a corner, and now they got to find a way without those guys to try to steal a win here on the road. They're back within 11 after the free throw. And plus Joshua Morgan with that illness. Uh, Myron Metcalf had reported he lost 15 pounds and hadn't really been eating solid food. I mean, he looked like a different guy when you saw him today. He could barely... You know, it didn't look like his clothes fit him. That 15 pounds made a big difference on Joshua Morgan, who was the Big West Defensive Player of the Year when he was at Long Beach State. Oh, Pella Larson, Jay, an awkward landing and immediately grabbed the left foot. He's up and going to the Arizona bench. Yeah, when you land on somebody's foot, 
just with that left foot went right on to the foot of the defender. That was Kajani Wright of USC. So it'll tend to Larson. Shot clock down to four. Oswell into the lane. Tough shot. The defense by James. Good recovery by Bonnie James. Got picked off on that screen but didn't give up on the play. James. Wright couldn't handle the pass. Another turnover by USC. A little pocket pass on that short corner ball screen. It's really a tough catch. Love penetrating. Finds the cutter. Now Grievous with the slam. Well, give credit there to K.J. Lewis. On that baseline drive, he made a little 45-degree cut right to the basket. And Caleb Love found him as he drew the defense to have dropped it off to Krivas. That's just beautiful basketball by Arizona. First points for Krivas on the night. Lead back to 13, seven minutes gone by. Almost a travel by Page. Three, James way off the mark. Rebound, Johnson. I think Bonnie James would have been better off shooting that right away. He hesitated and allowed the defense to recover. Here's Lewis, way off. Warner he clears. James, boy, we've seen that from his dad. What a pass. But blowing the layup that time was paid. Yeah, that's as good as it gets on the three-quarter court pass there. Johnson, that's not as good of a pass. Yeah, that should have been just a bounce pass. Would have been an easy layup. The passing ability of Ronnie James, that basketball IQ, it, it's there on both ends of the floor. As Rodman lost the ball, and I'm sure White didn't go after it, and now commits a foul. Undercutting Boswell to score, and will go to the line. Yeah, the ball was knocked away by Boswell, and it looked like Rodman kind of lost his footing as he tried to plant. It looked like he was trying to plant that. He just lost his footing there, and Boswell had a break on the ball. And you certainly don't want to foul here. Make him make the tough layup. Using a majoring in English. Wow. Off the glass. That's a, that's a graduate degree. Maybe a doctor as well. Doctorate in, in English. That thing almost hit the the foam on the on the side of the backboard there. And that was with the left hand. Ella Larson coming back from the Arizona locker room. Hopefully good to go as he Heads to the front of the bench. As much as those when you roll an ankle, as much as that that can hurt, it also scares you. Sure. There's the left foot of Larson, landed on the left foot of Kajani Wright. Free throws for Boswell. 62-46, Arizona up 16. Very much in control. The Wildcats really have been in control from the start of the game. They led 7-0. Had a cold stretch where USC climbed within four, but Arizona quickly extended the lead back to double figures. Numbers for the Wildcats. Lewis will slow it down. Boswell takes a deep three that's no good. Krivas gets the offensive rebound and the stick down. Iwa Chupu was stuck out on Boswell. And that meant he was away from the, uh, the defensive board. That left Krivas wide open to get that offensive rebound and stick back. Arizona in this second half, scramble, not just in rotation, but in scramble. And in this game, 22 field goals for Arizona, 16 assists on those 22 field goals. This Arizona team averages just under 20 assists per game. So they share the ball, but they're outscoring USC in points off turnovers 10 to 5. In the paint, 26 to 18, and second chance, 14 to 7. And the fast break points, 17 to 5. Now that doesn't count as a fast break basket, but I think it is one. Uh, because it was in transition, but the reversal, the way they attacked the basket, and the intelligent cutting, really beautiful basketball on that possession by Arizona. And Jay, you mentioned going to break how good you think Previs is going to be. If you're halfway decent, and you're an international player, you're on Tommy Lloyd's radar. He's done an excellent job, whether here in Arizona or as an assistant for all those years at Gonzaga, identifying talent from overseas. Well, that's a trademark of his, and 
I think for a lot of overseas players, especially young ones, college basketball is a great place for them to develop. Good, beautiful pick and roll on the open side. Just couldn't complete the play. I don't know how many languages Tommy Lloyd speaks, but he's got a lot of frequent flyer miles going all over the world to find talent. Pella Larson started his career at Utah, then transferred to Arizona. But that has been something that Tommy Lloyd's taken advantage of. He did it, as you mentioned, at Gonzaga, set himself apart. That's been a staple of recruiting here at Arizona. You mentioned in the first half you speak Swedish. Any, any of those other languages there that look familiar to you? I understand it, but I don't speak it. <laughs> I don't like to brag, Dave. <laughs> Iwachikwo inside gets the layup. Not been a lot of second chance opportunities for USC. They've been dominated on the glass. Back within 16 now, 10 minutes to go. After the make, USC back in this zone. It presents the 2 3. The wings are up, so the corners are going to be open. Badly to start of the second half for Boswell. They're out there together now. Boswell off the mark on the three. Grieb has kept it alive again. How many times has he done that tonight? But Iwachuku gets the clear. They changed uh, one of the fouls from Fornery, so he's only got three. As Balo pushes right off his spot. That's two on Balo and three on Arizona. More college basketball tomorrow night. Penny Hardaway has Memphis ranked in the top ten. They're off to their best start since the 2007-2008 season. They take on USF, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Javon Quinterly running the point for Penny Hardaway. Now they've had some really good wins. But the analytics don't seem to like them as much as the pollsters do. And a foul on James on the floor trying to get the ball away from Larson that's the 15 foul first on Bronny James yeah, good to see Pella Larson after rolling that left ankle back on the floor seems to be fine but he was first to the floor going after that ball and once you're on the deck Bronny James on top of him with his arms wrapped around him had to call the foul there Oswell, entry pass, and a foul on Iwachuku. That's four on him. So Rodman and Iwachuku have four fouls of these. Warnery is three for USC. And they've had a handful of games where they've committed 20 plus fouls, and they've lost all of those. And they've committed, so far in this game, 25. And Tommy Lloyd going back to essentially a four guard lineup in Umar Ballo. You had Ballo and Krivas on the floor, two big guys at the same time. What a big lineup. Love drives, lost the ball, and it was off his leg out of bounds. That ball reversal, and when you attack off ball reversal, so much better. Your ball just got knocked away, went off Caleb Love. And I think Caleb Love, when he drives it, and he becomes that much better of a player because he, he can really get downhill and when he gets fouled he makes you pay for it because he knocks his free throws down he doesn't do it enough he's only taken one two-point shot tonight the other nine have been threes good hustle that time by falling in love in arizona looking to run well, arizona getting down on the floor when it's been loose they've gotten just about every ball larson driving baseline ornery reaching foul three players now for usc with Four fouls. The smart play by Pella Larson being guarded by Warner. He's about 6'10. And he knew he had an advantage. Gave a little shot fake and drove him, got right into his body. 17 fouls, so one and one for Pella Larson, who started out his career at Utah before transferring to U of A. Got eight points tonight, two of three at the line. So Larson, 84% free throw shooter. You rarely see him miss two in one game. We keep talking about what a good free throw. I'm starting to believe in the announcer. <laughs> now. And a turnover by USC. Bradley, top angle, missed it. Rodman fouled by Ballo, and that's the 14 foul. No free throws. Third on Ballo. Arizona having some opportunities around the basket in the half court and in transition, just unable to finish some of these to stretch this lead out. Just a poor pass by USC. And maybe 
Bradley got going a little bit too fast there. Ballo going over the back of Rodgers. Low cross screen to get one on one in the post. That's got to be, I think. Second foul on right. 18 foul. No free throws though because of the player control foul. And that's why USC is running that to get the switch so they can get one on one in the post against a guard. But you can't just bowl the guy over. Once you lift up that arm, that's the end of it. I would say that uh, was an extension of the off arm. Yeah, I would say. 64-48. Arizona ranked 12. Trying to stay undefeated at home. To go to four and two, which would put them tied for second in the Pac-12 with Stanford and Arizona State. ASU started 4-0, oh, but two straight losses for the Sun Devils. Oregon is the only unbeaten team in league play remaining at 5-0. and oh. Dana Altman doing it again. He shot Johnson back on the floor for Arizona. Bradley played very well tonight. Goes to the bench. Seven points, three assists, but good defensively in this game. Like uh, Johnson was available there, but Boswell didn't find him. And Kobe Johnson hits the deck, but Love can't make him pay. Missed the three. A good block out by Page to keep Ballo off the offensive glass. Kobe Johnson hobbling a bit. USC can't afford anybody else to go down. Here's Morgan. Nice pass inside. Rodman with the layup. So just a beautiful cut by D.J. Rodman from the weak side. Bad defense to USC. Love floater, no. Batted out by Ballo. And Johnson, wide open. No good. Another offensive rebound. Larson puts it in. Rumar Ballo takes up so much space in there that Bella Larson able to get behind the defense. And Rodman gets the layup and injures himself. Already without Ellis, Collier, Morgan is limited because of the illness that he's just getting over. Now Rodney, hey, USC doesn't need another injury. The trainer's the MVP. Yeah. Boogie Ellis, they hope to get him back for Saturday's game at Arizona State. Boogie Ellis is a San Diego kid. Originally committed to Duke, then went to Memphis before transferring to SC. Preseason first team all Pac 12. Averages 19 points per game in the top five in the conference in scoring. He's going for 30 35 in a heartbeat. Turnover by Arizona. I'll let USC hang around. Kylan Boswell made a really good cut. They haven't. Arizona hasn't been getting as many cuts as perhaps they need in screens of the zone. You know, there are a lot of ways to attack a zone. You, know, you can overload it, you can screen it, and penetrating it, you know, whether by the pass or the dribble, can really be debilitating for a zone. But it hasn't been Arizona's best attack of the zone that we've seen. Ten turnovers by Arizona, 39% shooting. James way off for that one. He had a good start, three of three, but he struggled since. Downcourt pass by Love to Ballo. Ballo backing down Morgan. Can't finish, but he'll go to the line. He is a load in there. When he gets leverage and gets lower than the defender, he's going to move you around. And on the other end, he's an immovable object himself. Watch how he gets right into the body of Morgan, just bumps him back, and still is able to keep his balance to go to that left hand. So Rodman about to check back in. That's good news for USC. Ballo, by the way, the last two games is 27 rebounds. 14 of those on the offensive end. And the crowd sharing the made free throw. Ballo under 50% of the stripe on the year. Well, Ballo's averaging four offensive rebounds a game in Pac-12 play. Night off of the Suns. They're playing much better of late. Now that Bradley Beal, Durant, and Booker have an opportunity to actually play together for two, three games in a row. But Durant taking this one in tonight here in Tucson. I remember seeing Kevin Durant playing high school at the Nike Skills Academy in Oregon. The first one that we did. And that was probably the time I realized the boy, basketball has changed. <laughs> At 6'10", what he could do in high school. 
He had never seen much like him. You know, some guys were saying he doesn't, he doesn't go into the post much. Like, who cares? <laughs> One of the greatest shooters of all time, and he's seven feet tall. Ridiculous talent. Here's Ballo on the low block again, and they foul him again. How'd you like to be Joshua Morgan? This is not the guy to play against when you've lost 15 pounds with an illness. You could use every every extra ounce of strength. And now he's got four fouls. Every big on USC is four fouls right now, with the exception of Kajani Wright. The other four guys have four. Even with the zone, Arizona's just wearing down this USC team. Nicole Briscoe, Max McGee standing by the Sports Center. Connecticut, the new number one team in action against another ranked team. 18th ranked Creighton. Women Yama, the Spurs in Boston. And the Bills. Know what they're up against. Patrick Mahomes first, a road NFL playoff game for Mahomes. Keyshawn Johnson gets the rebound but missed the stick back, battling hard for it. And then I want to say USC touched it last. You know, that promo, I know the Spurs aren't having a great season, but Victor Wimbanyama has been everything and more that we thought he could be. And how he's performed as a rookie. I mean, he's been amazing. Things he can do at that side. It feels like another guy that I know you covered in high school that we said that about. And a lot of chances. Boswell hits a three. Obviously very different players, but in terms of things we have not seen before from yes. a guy that size. Yeah, that's why it was so disconcerting for me to do uh, Bronny James's high school game last year at Sierra Canyon when they played against Christ the King. You know, when you do when you do a dad's high school game and a son's high school game it's an indication that uh, six feet under is not not far hey dick enberg was saying the same thing about you when he was calling for high school games. <laughs> well, i told our i told our bosses if you assign me to uh, lebron's grandson's game I'm out. <laughs> sellers in transition five and a half to go Nice move by Page, counted in one. He's talented at 6'11". You saw him making three earlier. Foul on Ballo, that's four. When, when Aaron Page gets out in the open floor, he can really run. I mean, that game you did against Colorado, he had a chase down block that was next level. You'll see this holds and they're eight and ten and two and five in league play with a lot of conference games to go. And not knowing the health of Boogie Ellis. Obviously, Collier's out for several weeks. How do you keep this thing upright? Well, there are opportunities for players to step forward. And it's certainly this is not a, a building you want to walk into shorthanded it's difficult enough when you're playing well and you have everybody healthy but Boogie Ellis coming back from that left hamstring is going to be a, a huge boost to this team to you know have a 20 point a game scorer and a guy that's going to take a lot of defensive attention Byron has more in SC yeah Andy Enfield told me he's never experiencing anything like this in all of his years of coaching with three starters getting hurt all at the same time but he said his message to the team was simple Nobody's going to feel sorry for us, so we shouldn't feel sorry for ourselves. Well, and, and look, Andy Infield may end up going down as the best coach in USC history in terms of what he's done. You look at their record under Enfield is 11 years compared to SC previously. He's three wins away from tying Bob Boyd for third all time, and Andy's 54 and year 11. And they, they built it up in three straight NCAA tournaments. They've been elite defensively for many years. And a lot of people thought with the addition of Collier and James and the return of Ellis that SC was going to be one of the best teams in the country. But the expectations a lot of time in these freshmen to figure out team defense quickly, it's not that easy. It's not. The expectations were high. But it's hard to meet those expectations. The of Bobby Hurley does not look happy. Uh, four technicals on players in the second half, apparently, in that game. 
as uh, Arizona State drops to four and two in, in conference play. Joe Lenardi, latest bracketology, has three Pac-12 teams in Utah, Oregon, and Arizona. With Colorado just out. Love in transition. Missed the dunk. Looked like he took off too early. Bradley finishes though, and a foul. And he'll go to the line and try to complete it. You know, that's at least the second time in this game that USC has had out of bounds underneath. Winds up being a layup on the other end for Arizona. And you know, this is a game. Look, Arizona. If they wind up winning this game, they're going to be happy with the win. I think he did take off too far away, but. It's not been a game where Arizona's played great. I mean, they've been they've been turning the ball over, and you know, good take by Jaden Bradley to get the end one. You know, Arizona's got 16 assists in this game. It's also got 12 turnovers. Now, USC's turned it over 15 times, but Arizona's been too loose with the ball against this zone. Some miscommunication, throwing the ball out of bounds, guy cutting, and the passer not thinking he's cutting. Just little things like that. Otherwise, I think this game would be way out of hand in Arizona's favor. Will be interesting to see against UCLA who starts because Jim Bradley started the second half tonight, not Kyler Boswell. Out of bounds, last touch by Arizona, and you know Bradley's played well on the defensive end. He's got 10 points, three assists, made his free throws. Boswell's confidence has been up and down. He's been much better at home shooting the ball than he has been on the road. Yeah, you just have to play your way through. I mean, Kylan Boswell's a good player. James throws it out of bounds off of Ballo. Smart double team by Larson and Ballo. And Bronny James over in that left corner. It's awfully difficult just to inbound the ball. Bronny James, what, 6'3", going against almost 7 foot in Ballo, and that's another deflection by Ballo. And the shot clock at four now for SC, and Hornery will inbound this time. Trying to fight through that screen. Hornery thought it was still in his hand, but apparently would have counted, at least for now, until they went and looked at it, but he missed it anyway. Arizona by 15 with possession. There are three and a half to go. Love launches and misses. It's not a great offensive possession for Arizona. 15 points for Love, but he is 5 of 13 from the floor and 4 of 10. You know, 5 of 14 now, 4 of 11 from 3. Bradley commits the foul. Even you know, Arizona shooting under 40% on the game. And even so, they put up 74 points with 319 to go. You know, when this team is efficient, Arizona can put up big numbers. They shot 34% in their last game against Washington State. Kobe Johnson mid-range shot goes down. USC not finished. 13-point deficit, three minutes to go, but can they get stops? After a make, SC's been in this zone. So far, Arizona's been, just been throwing around the perimeter. That might be the dagger, the three by Love, that pushes the lead to 16. Fifth triple for Caleb Love. 18 points that's right at the season average for love in conference play he's up around 23 second in the league sellers able to answer with a three of his own sellers was really good especially in the first half against colorado at 16 points in the first half against the buffaloes only two in the second he's got a good mid-range game Uchuku with a pass breakup sellers in transition Defender left him, so he takes the three and makes it. And now SC back within 10. Just when you thought maybe Arizona put it out of reach. Arizona's just not penetrating this zone. It's just windshield wipered around the top. It's not making the 
the defense make any decisions. Larson caught that at his eyes, put it up, and drilled the three. Well, reversing the ball and getting it to the corner, that's where the zone can be vulnerable is in those corners. First three of the night for Larson, who leads the conference in three-point shooting. This on the other end by Kobe Johnson, Arizona ball. Bradley, reverse left, not there. Iwachuku rebounds, and Bradley takes it away from him. Arizona does not have to be in a hurry here. Let's burn the clock. One minute to go. Shot clock at 15. One minute remaining. Love driving. Floater. First down. Just the second two-point basket for Caleb Love. And his 20th point, that is his ninth 20-point game of the season. Timeout USC with the lead at 15 for Arizona. UCF, so they've lost twice. But they, they've gotten everything out of that group. And I think they've got a chance to, to get better. As for Arizona, the next question is, can they play better on the road? Can they shoot it better and defend better? You touched on the Stanford game where they gave up 100. Some of their guys, their, their home road splits. Boswell's one guy shooting it great at home, not so good on the road. Now, I, I know in the tournament, you're not playing road games per se, but it's not in this building. And they've got to find a way to play better outside this building if they're going to go far in the NCAA tournament. I think the answer to that question is yes, they can. And I think they will. Well, USC, meanwhile, will fall to 8 and 10, 2 and 5 in league play. They hope to get Boogie Ellis back this weekend. Arizona will play UCLA. Be the last time that uh, the Bruins play here in Tucson as a Pac 12 member, and obviously that's been a great rivalry for many years. Arizona goes to 13 and 4. Four and two in conference play now tied for second in the Pac-12. Tommy Lloyd with some words of encouragement for Bronny James. Six straight wins for Arizona against the U.S.